Hi everyone, Redneck Computer Geek here, and today we're going to be examining the Spicer transmission that we put the zinc locker in almost exactly a year ago. Uh, we originally built this about February 20th last year. It's now March um, 3rd, a year later, so we're going to tear it apart. Um, one thing I would like to point out is the transmission never actually fully failed. What I actually discovered was that in the setup where it mounts to the bottom side of main mud mower, it actually snapped off the front transmission bracket, which is the bracket that goes to this side over here. So it actually snapped that entirely off. And so what was happening is, as the machine was torquing up, when you'd let the clutch off, the whole transmission was actually tipping forward, causing the belt to slip on the smaller pulley. So, I actually removed it and I put in the MST-203 that I converted to an MST-206, which you can see the video for that in the description. You can also find the original video for this setup. I'd like to warn you, yet again, zinc is dangerous. If you attempt to do this type of build, make sure you do it in a well-ventilated area. So, without further ado, we're going to get started on this. Um, if you're dealing with one of these spicers, you're going to need a couple of things. The first thing that you're probably going to need is a couple of small screwdrivers that fit into the holes of the Torx bits. That way you can punch out all the dust and the grime and everything that gets in there. I'd also recommend an ice pick for the same concept, being able to clean out where the Torx go. And of course, you'll need a ratchet with, in this case, a number T30 Torx for this. And the other thing that I would recommend if you're doing this on a regular basis is a palm ratchet of this nature. They're really simple and they make it nice and easy to do when you're doing a whole bunch of them around the case just doing quick tightens. These you can pick up at almost any store. Usually it's a set for about 20 bucks. So at this point we're going to get started. Um, I would like to do a review on the transmission and cover a few things. The first of which I'd like to show is that on this side here, this is where the transmission bracket was that shattered off, and there's actually seems to be seepage coming from the entire side of this, and what I noticed earlier is that these bolts on this particular side are actually broken in half, it feels. So they're definitely loose. Oh, it's actually not broken. But it seems to have come free from the case. So I guess we'll see what it looks like on the inside once we get it torn down more. And also make sure you got a container to throw all your parts in. That's the reason why this particular case does not have a shifting ball in it, is because I lost it while doing the original teardown. You can shift these by feel. It's not very good for the transmission, but it is doable. Um, also, when doing these spicers, there's usually a hidden um, bolt here. There's usually another hidden Torx here. So a hidden Torx here and one Torx here. So we're going to go around, undo it, pop it off. We'll spray down the differential and the zinc locker with carb cleaner, and we'll see what it looks like on the inside. Another thing I'd like to point out for people is that you can get one of these 150 pound electric impacts. They're usually somewhere around 60 bucks or so. Um, they're about 150 pounds, but really they're, I don't know, I would say they're more like 120 most of the time. This is actually the third one that I've had over the years. But they make doing stuff like this so much faster. And just be careful if you're using it to assemble with because it will put it in a lot harder than the original torque specs. So if you're using it to put in, just simply cinch it up and then go back through and hand tighten everything. Also while you're doing this, you're probably going to want some needle nose. For some reason these torque bits that the spicers use sometimes get stuck in and you have to lift them out.
So what's interesting here is actually the entire front section, all of the bolts seem to have forced loose. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this random one out of another hole and we're actually going to impact it down in and see if it actually torques up. I want to see whether the threads are gone or not. No, that torqued up. It actually got thread. So I'm not sure whether that was pulled out or what. But either way, there we go. And the center one here seems to actually be covered in a lot more grease than I would like. So I'm not quite sure what's up with that. Yeah, that's covered in a whole ton of grease. Something let loose in the center. That's not good. Now, a lot of people compare these spicers to the Peerless. And really, that's an unfair comparison. Um, you can compare the Spicer to the 930 Peerless, but they're built a lot the same, but the Spicer just has nowhere near the structural integrity that the Peerless 930 has. Um, if you'd like to see more on that, I can also post that video in the description. So there we go. That's all of those. I'm going to reposition the camera so it's in a more over the top section and we'll see if we can break it open. In order to break one of these open basically what you do is you take a couple of flatheads and you set them in the corners here and you set another one in the corner somewhere near the differential and another one here. You slowly knock it in until it manages to break it open just slightly and then work your way around the edge. Try not to put them in the flat areas here and try not to put it in the flat area here because it will snap out these sections. You want to go places that have reinforced beams. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a nice flathead and we're going to set it into the edge here. And we're just going to knock it in with a hammer. And when you're doing this, you'll actually hear it make a suction sound and you'll kind of all of a sudden hear it pop. And if your hand is on it, you'll actually feel it all of a sudden let towards you. Just like that. So this one actually let off pretty easy, but I'm assuming that's because this side here was already partially broken free. So Normally what you would do is you'd put one down this side and then you'd put another one right here in the differential and then work your way over and do this side. This one here is already partially broken because of damage to the tranny. So I'm betting I can probably just pull it and have it give. There we go. Okay, so this is your input shaft and your input shaft is going to just simply lift out and actually that one's pretty loose. It's a lot looser than I would like. So that's not good, but then again this thing was an old piece of junk anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the input shaft and we're going to lift up and slightly tap the shifter. And it didn't let loose, so we're going to have to tap the shifter down through using a screwdriver. So you want to pull up on the case a little bit while tapping the shifter. There it goes. Okay, so from here we lift off the top. And we'll flip it over. So the input's looking okay. The gears are definitely intact. And the grease definitely doesn't look that bad. Ugh. 
So the transmission itself, you can definitely see along this side, the, seam, the seal definitely broke free because there's grease covering the seal entirely. So I'm not sure whether that was the transaxle brace that broke that caused that or whether the tranny itself gave. There's a lot of torque going on here because this is locked. So what we're going to do now is we're going to lift this out and we're going to spray it down and see what this actually looks like now. Okay, so we've got our carburetor cleaner. For demonstrational purposes, we have a coffee can. We're going to take it, lift it up onto the coffee can, spray it down, see what it looks like on the inside. All right, here we go. Up and at them. As we can see, axles are still solid. There's a little bit of play on either side. I don't know if you can see this in the video. But they're definitely still connected, definitely still solid. So we'll spray it down some, get the grease off of it and see what the see what it looks like inside. Now while we're doing this, there seems to be a lot of argument about tearing down and doing the grease on these and basically what it comes down to is some people use gasoline other people use carburetor cleaner um, some people use diesel fuel other times people will use kerosene really it comes down to just the preference whatever happens to be cheaper in your location in my case i can pick up cans of this for like usually about three dollars a can whereas diesel fuel tends to be about $3.50 a gallon, and I tend to run that through my furnace. So let's see what we got in here, and we're going to get scrubbing this down. I'll catch you guys once I get it cleaned up. All right, so the first discovery that I've made so far is that the bull gear actually now walks back and forth. If you can see that, I'll turn it sideways. So the bull gear actually is walking back and forth across the zinc. It's not much, it's only about an eighth of an inch. And actually if you look here, you can see there seems to be a slight bit of variation. But as far as I can find, Everything is intact. There doesn't seem to be any actual cracking. There's no deformities. I really think I can probably put the tranny back together and throw it into another project. Okay, so at this point, there's no question in my mind that it was still totally solid. If you can see right here, you can actually see the gears themselves. There's your gears right there, bound up by the zinc. And as you can see, it is totally solid. There's nothing whatsoever broken free. There's no chunks missing. There's no jagged edges. There's the other side. So there we go. If that hasn't proven that the zinc locker is a viable option, considering the fact that I plowed with it for almost three months, I used it all summer, I horsed around with it, I crashed it off of the top of a dirt pile for you guys to see, and I snow romped it through about 12 inches worth of snow with bear claws. Yes, bear claws. So, is the zinc locker a doable option for people who do not want to weld? I'd say it is. Hopefully you guys will test it out yourself, and we'll get confirmment. Have fun, guys. Redneck Computer Geek, signing out.